Over the past four months, Russian military forces have experienced the highest levels of casualties since the start of the full-scale invasion in February 2022. Recent reports indicate that Russian casualties, including both wounded and killed soldiers, have averaged over 1,000 per day during this period, the UK Defence Intelligence reports. May 2024 saw the highest daily average with 1,262 casualties. In June and July, these numbers slightly decreased to 1,163 and 1,140 respectively, but the situation escalated again in August with an average of 1,187 casualties per day. As of August 2024, Russia has likely suffered over 610,000 total casualties. This high casualty rate shows no signs of slowing with expectations that the daily average will continue to exceed 1,000 throughout September 2024. Despite the heavy losses, Russian forces are continuing their operations with soldiers being frequently wounded or killed. Several recent journalistic investigations have provided statistics showing that Russia's military have suffered staggering losses since launching its February 2022 full-scale invasion of Ukraine. More than 70,000 people fighting in Russia's military have now died in Ukraine, according to data analyzed by the BBC. And for the first time, volunteers, civilians who joined the army forces after the start of the war, now make up the highest number of people killed on the battlefield since Russia's full-scale invasion began in 2022. Every day, the names of those killed in Ukraine, their obituaries and photographs from their funerals are published across Russia in the media and on social networks. BBC Russian and the independent website Media Zona have collated these names along with names from other open sources, including official reports. New graves in cemeteries have also helped provide the names of soldiers killed in Ukraine. These are usually marked by flags and wreaths sent to the Defence Ministry. In late June, independent Russian outlet Important Stories found more than 71,000 Russian men died in the war since February 2022. Based on figures compiled by the Russia's State Statistics Service, the report also found that at least 45,000 Russian soldiers died in Ukraine in 2023 alone. Sergei Krivenko of Moscow-based Citizen Army Law, a human rights group, says Russia's aggressive censoring of stats, along with virtually no remaining independent news outlets, means that the rate of casualties is unlikely to sway popular opinion about the war. Krivenko said that while Russia's enormous losses in Ukraine cannot be hidden, with cemeteries expanding in every Russian city and town, it will not force the Kremlin to change course. They will only turn up patriotic rhetoric more intensely to explain the growing losses, he said. They will repeat that there is a war with the West, so everyone goes to the front. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky used his address to the UN General Assembly Wednesday to highlight fears of a nuclear incident as his country battles Russian aggression. The Ukrainian leader raised alarm over Russia's potential actions against his country stressing, in Ukraine, we know exactly what we are dealing with. He urged global leaders Wednesday to stand with his country and and thank them for their support more than two years into Russia's war. Thank you very much, dear leaders, your excellencies. Today I want to tell you about a day that has already passed and a day that must never come. On the night of March 4th, 2022, I received one of the most terrifying reports in the beginning of a full-scale Russian invasion against Ukraine. The report was about Russian tanks firing directly at the buildings of our Ukrainian nuclear power plant, the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant, the largest one in Europe, six nuclear reactors. The Russian army stormed this facility just 
as brutally as any other during this war, without thinking about the consequences, possibly disastrous. This was one of the most horrifying moments of the war, when no one could know how Russian strikes on the nuclear facility would end, and everyone in Ukraine was reminded of what Chernobyl means. Now, the Dabarizhia nuclear power plant remains occupied by Russian forces, unfortunately, and it's at risk of a nuclear incident. This is the major source of radiation danger in Europe, possibly in the world. That's why in the peace formula I presented the first point is about nuclear safety. In Ukraine, we know exactly what we are dealing with. And I want to thank you, the General Assembly members, for adopting a resolution in July this year on the safety of nuclear facilities in Ukraine. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky told the Summit for the Future at the United Nations Monday that his country supports efforts to keep all nations united, safe and strictly adhere to the UN Charter. We are now preparing for the secondary summit moving forward with our partners, Zelensky said. We are working on food security, energy security, and holding Russia accountable for its terror. The Pact for the Future, approved by the General Assembly on Sunday, aims to meet the challenges of the 21st century and unite the world's divided nations to move quickly to implement the agreement's 56 actions. Russia proposed an amendment that would have significantly watered down the agreement. Only six countries supported Russia Iran, Belarus, North Korea, Nicaragua, Sudan and Syria. Fifteen countries abstained. Putin has stolen much already, but he will never steal the world's future, Zelensky said.